Hi there. In this short video, we're going to be talking about track targeting, marking in and out points, and also making selections within the timeline and how they kind of interact with each other. One common gotcha that I see from Avid editors is that oftentimes they'll accidentally select something in the timeline, and then they're trying to do a very precise action using track targeting, using in and out ranges, and they're wondering, why is Premiere ignoring all of that and doing something completely different? Let me show you. So to start with, here I am in my timeline. Currently, I've got all my tracks selected. You can see here I've got V1 through V5. I've got A1 through A7 currently selected. And uh, what I'm going to do, it's actually a V1 through V8 from the look of it here. Now, what I'm going to do is I want to make a very precise selection in my timeline. And really, the area that I need to affect is just on V1 and V2. So I'm going to hold down the Command key here and drag up to kind of make sure that I've got all my upper tracks deselected. We'll go ahead and deselect V1 and V8. And then in this case, I don't need to do anything with my audio. So I'm going to make sure and uh, go ahead and hold down the Command key again, drag up along here make sure that I've got all my audio turned off as well. So now I just have V1 and V2 selected. Now I'm going to go ahead and make an in and out range here. We'll go ahead and start from the head of this clip here. I'm holding down the shift key while I do that to snap the playhead to the beginning of that clip in V1. I'll mark an in point. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to mark an out point right here. Now, let me go ahead and select something completely outside of the range that I have designated here. I'm going to come over here and select this clip, and let's just look at that clip just to see what it is here. Eh, maybe we'll select the clip next to it. That's really, really different. It's uh, very noticeable what that is here. Now, I've got that clip selected in my timeline. You can see that it's got a little white outline around it, showing that that clip is currently the selected clip. And then I'm going to come over here where I've got my in and out range, and I'm going to go ahead and hit Shift U to make a subsequence. This is something I showed in a previous video about how to load part of my timeline into the source monitor. Now you may be looking at that going, wait a minute. I have an in and out range selected. I've gone in and I've selected V1 and V2. What the heck has happened here? It's loaded up a clip that doesn't even exist in the range that I'm currently looking for. Again, what it did was it made a subsequence based on my selection in the timeline. Anytime you have a clip selected in a Premiere timeline, that clip is what Premiere thinks that you want to work with selection overrides your in and out marks. It overrides track targeting. And this can be a hard concept to wrap one's brain around because if you're doing that type of precise work, you may think, you know, hey, Premiere, do what I'm asking you to do here. But it is. Let me show you this one more time. I'm going to come over here and select another random clip here just so I have that selected. Now I'm going to come back over here into my edit range. I've got my in point, my out point. I've carefully adjusted my track targeting. Just for the heck of it, I'm also going to add A2 here just to get out something extra. And again, I'm going to hit Shift U to copy that. And it's grabbed something completely strange and random from me. Why? because it's going through and looking at whatever my selection is, and that's what's ending up over in the source monitor, not my in and out range. Now, it's very, very easy to fix this. All I have to do is click away from anything so nothing is selected in the timeline. Or even better, I recommend going into your keyboard shortcuts, and there is a keyboard shortcut called D select all. There it is. Now, I typically, I think the default is this uh, shift command A, but I kind of like having the uh, something like the F12 key or something very, very easy to remember uh, as a keyboard shortcut for this. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll delete the existing one. I'm just going to leave it as F12 so it's up here. I'll go ahead and click OK. Now, if I've accidentally selected some clips or something like that, 
particularly if you scroll them off the screen, it's one of those things that, you know, you may not have any idea what Premiere is doing because it, the selection that you've made is not even visible at that point, but it still is what Premiere is going to take when you use commands like copy paste, make subsequence, other types of commands. So what I wanna do now, now that I have this selected, I'm gonna go ahead and press the F12 key. That just clears out that selection. So now when I do Shift U, I actually get the range of clips that I was looking for that I selected within my in and out range. So it's not a bug. It is just a default way that Premiere works um, where you want to use selections and you have that ability to you know, make a large selection and do something with that. It can really come in handy. And there are a lot of editors, Premiere editors in particular, that like to use that selection functionality. If you do want to really work with track targeting in and out ranges, just remember, deselect everything first, and then Premiere will do exactly what you're asking it to do. Thanks for watching.